Thanks for staying with us. The National Bureau of Statistics has said that uh, FA jumped by 25% in uh, July. Domestic travelers paid 25% more for air flights in July 2024, a new report by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics uh, said. And I quote, in air travel, the average fare paid by air passengers for special routes single journey was 98,561 Naira for 74 Cabo in July 2024, showing an increase of 9.65% compared to the previous month, June 2024. The development comes after the federal government last month said it would further raise its tax charges amid complaints by the airline operators of Nigeria over multiple taxation. Our guest this morning is Wola Shadare, aviation analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay. So some are saying that it's a result, the spike in the prices was as a result of the holiday period. And some others are saying, according to this report, it is because uh, the presidency talked about increasing the taxes, even when the aviation uh, players or the players in the industry uh, uh, were complaining of too much taxation. What do you think was responsible for this spike? And what does this show about the aviation industry in Nigeria at the moment? Thank you very much. What it shows about the aviation industry in Nigeria is that the aviation industry in Nigeria is in serious um, dire strikes in the sense that um, Fares have been going up in the last one year, two years, or even three years. Uh, but it has never been this high, considering the fact that um, aviation fare has been very stable in the last one year or two years. Um, the costs are going up so much that the airlines have no um, solution um, and have been forced to ensure that effort uh, go up. But the problem is that if you look at the aviation industry, you'll find out that jet fuel alone uh, constitutes about 35-40% of the revenue of airlines. And globally, this has become a very big a problem and challenge. But in the aviation industry, we have a lot of taxes, we have a lot of um, uh, costs that the airlines need to also cover. But the airlines also need to look um, inward and very deeply also because once we keep increasing fares uh, because of some of the problems that we have uh, as a result of cost of um, aviation fuel, uh, cost of operation, we are indirectly sending a lot of people um, to the road, to the, to the motor parks because um, these are the, the real competitors of the airline. And if you also look at the statistics, you'll find out that a lot of people are taking to air travel just for the fact that airfares are very, very expensive and airfares are determined by the economy of the country. So uh, you ask yourself how many people can afford to travel by air, spend about 100,000, 120,000 per hour flight. I don't think we have so many people doing that. If you also look at this country, Nigeria is a very huge market for domestic and international airlines. Despite that, we have less than 5% of the population taken to air travel, and that speaks a lot. What it shows you that the economy cannot support a lot of people uh, to travel by air. Rather, they would rather go by road. And if you also look at the dangers on our road, you find out that uh, it now becomes which one do I take depending on what you can afford or how deep your pocket is. So it has a lot of uh, implication for the aviation industry and the economy generally. Uh, be that as it may, the airlines also need to begin to think out with their operation to the type of aircraft they are going to use. The era of using uh, bigger agents and no longer feasible because when you use bigger jets, you're going to spend more for you, you're going to spend more on the cost of operating that aircraft. So some airlines have devised a new way of using a propeller aircraft or using smaller aircraft, which has drastically reduced the cost of operation for both for, for 
But for those who are still using the um, 737 or the 737 and the um, airbuses, they will need to spend more. And they will also need to cover their, the cost of operation. So it has a lot of implications for the economy, for the airline. And if you look at it, two airlines are at the verge of collapse. Uh, I will mention their names because we know them. Uh, one was granted as a result of re regulatory requirement. The other one decided that it was going to suspend his aircraft um, operations because of um, many of his aircraft are outside the country for maintenance. Mm. And that has equally affected the aviation industry. There is what we call fleet depletion. For about 11, 10 or 11 airlines that are in operation, the total fleet of their aircraft is less than 50. That speaks a lot for a market that is over 220 uh, million people. And that is why our aviation has not really, really grown to the level that you want to grow. 11 airlines with less than 50 aircraft shows that the airlines do not have the critical mass to operate. And that is why you're seeing this um, high cost of uh, fares. Because if you have volume, if you have critical mass, then you have a lot of people you're going to take. But a situation where your fleet has depleted so much that um, Time schedule has become a problem. No airlines keep to schedule. The aviation industry is in a serious mess and needs urgent uh, solution. Like someone would say, the aviation industry in Nigeria is intensive care, but we are looking for somebody who will come and rescue uh, that critical uh, sector of the economy. So the airlines are in serious trouble. And if care is not taken, we may be forced to see more airlines closing shop and that tells a lot about how the economy has affected not only the airlines but virtually everybody um if you ask me um i doubt if a lot of people earn uh, more than 100 or 200,000 naira. and if i'm traveling to lagos from abuja what it means i'm going to use my total earnings to make that trip and that is why you see the same set of people are the ones traveling. The government people, the business people, the contract people are the ones traveling. So aviation in Nigeria has become a big luxury. Unlike in the UK, in the US, where everybody takes take to air travel because it's cheaper and it is faster. If you're flying from um, uh, from UK to, to maybe London to uh, Madrid, for instance, you can get fares as cheap as uh, $30, $25 if you book ahead, long time ahead. So you see, even for the fact that you have other modes of transportation like the fast train and the uh, good roads, you still see the volume. Um, you see a, 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 a country turning out uh, over 60 million passenger traffic annually. But in Nigeria, is um, less than that. You are aware about 220 million, but the annual traffic, both for international and domestic, is less than 20 million. So that tells a lot that yes, we have the market, but the economic situation has made it very, very difficult for people to take to air travel and for the airlines to even be in business. Look at the forex issue. Uh, it becomes very difficult for airlines to 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 be in business in the sense that you never can tell what the exchange rate will be tomorrow. If it is five naira today, by tomorrow, it could be six naira, it could be seven naira, it could be eight, eight naira per dollar. I'm just giving an analysis because we know it's much more than that. Yeah. So how do you plan in a situation like that? So it becomes very, very difficult. It becomes very appealing for them to begin to plan. And that is why you see a lot of airlines closing shops. And that actually, uh, you know, raises a concern. Um, in the last 20, 25 years, we've had more than 100 airlines closing shops. So it really shows you the high mortality rate of our airlines, of our of doing business in Nigeria. And government, like we said, should always look for ways to 
help this airline to ameliorate some of the problems they are going through, um, multiple taxation, um, offering favorable environment to airlines to operate, and making the economy a bit more friendlier so that a lot of people can take to the to air travel. And when a lot of people take to air travel, it has a catalytic effect on the value chain you know, and the aviation value chain and more money will come to the airlines, more money will come to the industry. But if people don't travel, the sector will continue to be where it is today. Now, we, we, you said, you used the word that some people are, are using for the um, uh, aviation sector, that it is in intensive care. Who should lead the fight to remove it from this intensive care? Because the problems are coming from all angles. The economy is not good enough for the people who are operating, the players in this industry. But also the players in this industry, you've said that they, they could do better by, by looking for cost-effective uh, means of transportation or the, the airplanes that they buy, because there are some that will be uh, more, more expensive to maintain than others and all that. So who should lead this, who should be at the front to fight this? Is it the government with its policies or is it the airlines that should think ahead and do what can help them? Because people want to travel by air. That is the safest uh, for now. Uh, I'm not talking about that the, the, it doesn't have accidents and all that, but it is safest because you're safe from bandits, you're safe from a lot, you save your time, you save so many things. And it is really worrisome that people cannot travel. So where do we start to, to really do these reforms that will make people travel more on air than they are doing presently? Is it the government? or the people who are owning the airlines and the people who should play in that space? Uh, thank you very much. I think the government should take the lead, but we are all guilty uh, when with what we're going through, particularly the airlines to our duty, the government is guilty, the stakeholders are also very guilty in the sense that, um, yes, let's take it one after the other. I think government should take the lead by, first of all, looking at how to harmonize these charges. These charges are too many. A situation where you have over 25, 30 uh, charges, um, where do you expect the airlines to make money? They will transfer this cost to the passenger. Mm. And when these costs are too heavy on the passengers, definitely we are going to see what we are seeing now. Fares will be very high, fares will be very expensive, our tickets will be very, very expensive. But at the same time, the airlines also need to look in what and begin to look at how they can collaborate. One thing I've discovered about Nigerian airlines is that they don't collaborate, they don't partner. And like in other clients, let's take example of um, Air France and PLF. This is the biggest airline alignment in the world. These airlines are national carrier by all standards before they metamorphose into a privatized airline, but they are still controlled by their state government and by their uh, country's government. Air France is big enough with over 400 aircraft or more. Um, KLN is equally as big, very big that, you know, they operate differently, but they look for ways to collaborate to cut costs. What they do is that anywhere you see KLN, you also see Lufthansa instead of, um, sorry, PLM Air France. So what they have done is to cut costs. Um, uh, a KLM official or KLM of, uh, official also had to do bookings or to even answer inquiries on behalf of uh, Air France, mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that has helped. It, it stopped them from having two offices. They can have one office and the same personnel to do the job. So it takes a lot of cost from you. They also have interlining agreement. What interlining of ocean means is that if I'm going to a particular destination that airline B is not going to, I can take that airline B passenger to that same destination and we can consign cost. This is done by IATA, International Air Transport Association. You are not flying, but you're making money. We've not had that in the domestic airline business. 
each one of them compete against each other. And when you compete against each other, you're losing everything. So one would have expected that the airlines would also look at that model, bring it here to cut costs. If, for example, Airpiece is not going to Cali and Overland is going to Cali and you're having like 40 passengers, you can say, Airpiece, take this passenger from me to this destination. I'm not flying there. We share the cost. I'm not flying, but I'm making money. You're not flying, you're making money. So nobody loses in that uh, instant. But a situation where you want to take 30 passengers to Abuja, that cannot even uh, fuel your aircraft. So you are even running at a loss, flying from um, Lagos to Abuja with 30 passengers without a fuel or 80 uh, uh, percent capacity load factor. You are already already um, running at a loss. So there must be collaboration. There must be synergy to work together. The airlines have not done that, and that is why you see them. They are really really bleeding. And after bleeding so much, you see them closing shop. Yes, I agree that it's free entry and free exit. Once they go, other airlines come. But what becomes the fate of other airlines that are coming? So you begin to see a lot of problems within the sector. So that is why I said government should bring the, Yes, you can't force merger. You can't force um, collaboration. Uh, it's not the duty of government. But government must try as much as possible to make the environment very friendly and one that people can easily do business. There are so many bureaucracy in, in everything we do in this part of the world. To get your fuel is a problem. To even pay your charges is a problem. It's never straightforward. So these have contributed to the type of problem we are having in the aviation industry. And I feel the government, I, I, the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace De De Development is trying to hold um, a kind of stakeholders meeting um, very soon so that some of these problems can be tackled. But I just hope it's not going to be all talk, 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 talk without action. We need action. We need to see deliberate, intentional plan on how to rescue the sector. We've had a lot of talk. We had a lot of seminars. We had a lot of summit that are not yielded fruit. We need to be intentional about what we want to do. We need to be intentional about how to rescue the industry. If not, uh, the aviation industry is a big catalyst driving the economy. Sure. Once the aviation industry is very, very not working, it's going to affect every other part of the economy. And that is exactly what we are seeing now. Okay, well, um, since the government cannot take everything at once, uh, we're, we're closing now, but the government cannot take everything at once, what will be the first few things that they need to do at least things that will show us that uh, they are being deliberate, using your words, uh, uh, in uh, reforming that sector and making it more palatable for the people who want to play in that sector. Yeah, the cost of um, operation is very, very high. And government, like I said, government must start by reviewing some of these charges. Some of these charges are so high. Just last month, the Nigeria Space Management Agency uh, try to increase navigational, <coughs> excuse me, navigational charges by over 400 percent or thereabout. So, and um, that was even going to put a lot of body on the on the players, on the operators. But the Minister of Aviation quickly intervened, looking at the the whole situation, how is going to seriously affect them. But you cannot also blame some of these agencies. The cost of one of these agencies uh, are very, very high. Um, um, uh, uh, navigational security or airspace security is also very important. And where is NAMA going to get this money, even not from the airline? So we need to sit down to balance some of these things. In as much as we don't want anybody to infiltrate our airspace and to cause harm or damage, we should as much as possible look at ways that we can sit down, they can sit down with the airlines to see how they can navigate some of these challenges. But government must take the lead. But 
beyond that, the allies must also look at the way the way of helping themselves, like I mentioned, collaboration, uh, partnership, instead of seeing themselves as competitors. You can collaborate and at the same time compete, and that will do a lot of good for the industry. But um, the problem I have with this industry is that some of the operators are not even serious about coming into the aviation. They're coming into aviation. Aviation is seen as one of the best way, if I may say, to lend that money. So a lot of them are not even in the industry uh, for what they claim they are doing. They are just there to lend enough money. At the end of the day, they will just take away whatever they must have lended. So only very few of them are serious about this industry. Majority of them are in this industry not for the business of running an airline but you know, using it as conduit for some other uh, nefarious activities. Okay, so uh, this is where we'll drop it. It's, uh, we're very, very grateful for the insight you've given to us, what is happening in the aviation industry. I, I hope that uh, the players there will take heed and do the needful because uh, uh, if, if, like they say, if the mountain doesn't come to Mohammed, Mohammed goes to the mountain. They can't wait for the government to do everything for them. They need to do the things that they that they can, you know, benefit from on their own before they wait for the government to do what they sh should do. But this government, we hope that will give that level playing field, that conducive environment for businesses, especially the aviation uh, sector, to thrive. Like you said, uh, if if the aviation industry is in coma or is intensive uh, uh, care, that means the economy is also bleeding. And that is not good for us at all as a nation. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Shadri, for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for having me. We've been talking to Mr. Wale Shadari, an aviation analyst, and we were looking at the fact that uh, the fares of, uh, of travel, air travel, uh, spiked by 25% in July. And we were looking at why it did that and what else the aviation industry can do to make it better. People need to travel more on air. It is faster, it is safer, and so many other advantages. But this is where we are going to wrap it up today on the show. We're hoping that you had a wonderful time and we're hoping also that you'll rejoin us tomorrow for another edition. On behalf of the entire crew of Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji, thanking you for being there.